Hello and welcome to another installment of questions from viewers and if you're new to this series and you'd like to ask me a question and potentially get it answered here on the channel in a video such as this one, all you need to do is jump over to speakpipe.com slash hsg and you can record a question for me there up to 90 seconds long and as I said, then potentially get it featured here on the channel. So without any further ado, let's get into this particular question, which you'll have seen of course from the title and the thumb, from Spurs Reading. 96. Hello HSG, I hope you and all of your subscribers are having a great day. My question concerns the automotive world and it's a really simple question but I suppose it'll be quite difficult for you to answer and it comes down to the real world question of uh, powertrains. What kind of powertrain realistically would you actually purchase in the future if you were given an option? Uh, would you have a car that's run purely on electric power, or one that would be run on hydrogen fuel cells, or would you prefer the old way, petrol, diesel, or maybe a combination of uh, petrol and electric working, working together, aka a hybrid? So, there is our question, and it's a juicy one, because to me, this question, and the answer which you could have, and the opinions which you could have, could change very frequently, because there are very few things in the automotive world that have as many eyes on it, and as much research done in an ongoing sense into it, as renewable, sustainable, and alternative fuel sources, you know, powertrain types, etc. We've got hydrogen, we've got electric, we've got the existing petrols and diesels, even back in the day, steam cars and hybrids, and doubtless more alternatives in the future. Even ideas thrown around that never really came to fruition, like fusion, nuclear, that kind of stuff. My answer a year ago would already be different to what I would say now. So who knows what it would be like a year again from now. Now, if you've asked me the same question a year ago, I would probably said electric vehicles. Because even though the manufacturing process is currently where most of the issues come, in terms of environmental sustainability, the vehicles themselves do have a number of fantastic advantages. And I'm not actually just talking about the environment. Even when it comes to performance, look at what Tesla is already doing. Tesla is a very young company, and they are already striking fear into most cars in terms of quarter mile drag times and just sheer acceleration. They're not exactly rocket science. SpaceX is, Tesla is not, they're just electric cars taken to the nth degree. And of course, I'm not trying to belittle what Musk and his team are doing, they are fantastic, but electric cars have been around for over a century. They've been around since the early 1900s, even in a production sense, back when steam cars were a thing as well. So this isn't a new idea, it's just an idea which was kind of left, much like the steam car, and now has been picked up again. And that jump in technology has made a massive difference. However, the biggest thing holding back electric cars is a relatively simple, but at the same time complicated thing, and that is the batteries. The batteries are the key to so many things. The sustainability, the cost effectiveness, the weight of the vehicle, and even the fuel range, if you want to look at it that way, it's all down to the batteries. It's the batteries that make them heavy, it's the batteries that make them expensive, to produce and then to sell, it's the batteries which cause the most environmental impact to manufacture, and it's the battery limitations which cause that limitation in top end performance and range. So if you can make a better battery over time, which of course they will, because again they are researching that kind of stuff intensively, and not just Tesla, Remac for example have already had great strides in it, it is going to get better to the point where eventually you would have a fantastic electric car. An electric car which, you know, would, would be kind of like the next McLaren F1, the next Bugatti Veyron. I believe that is going to happen. We're not there yet. Some people might not might like to think, you know, Tesla Roadster, Remac. No, we're still not there. I'm talking a car which redefines. Those cars haven't redefined. They're just very, very good. Something which is genuinely, you know, blowing everything out of the water. Good. And not just in terms of performance, but something that's lighter, that's not stupidly expensive to build and maintain, doesn't have horrendous environmental impact, etc. That's what I would have said, and I still have a lot of belief and a lot of love for electric vehicles. I've driven and ridden multiple electric cars and bikes, I enjoyed them very much, but a lot of petrol heads don't like them. 
And it's not just electric cars and bikes, it's hydrogen, it's hybrids. They are, and especially in the motorcycle world, traditionalists. They don't like losing what they love, and they don't like radical change. That's understandable. At the same time, though, I like both, and that's kind of the, that's kind of the case for a lot of things here on the channel. You know, I like cars and bikes. I like PlayStation and Xbox, Forza and Gran Turismo. I'm a strong believer in actually liking more than one thing, as weird as that sounds in 2021. But what I would say now, in terms of my biggest hope for the future, is actually none of the ones which I just mentioned. It's one which is relatively young. It's something which I haven't looked into as much as the others, but already it's very exciting stuff. You can very easily begin to look into it and read up on it online. The Volkswagen Group, including Porsche and Ducati, are looking into this. There's a Chinese factory already producing this, and they're going to be producing even more. And BMW is looking into it as well with an American company, and that is synthetic fuel. Synthetic fuel is kind of like the next step from biofuel, and it's carbon neutral. That is the goal. Now, again, I'm not an expert on this stuff, and everything has a cost. Everything has a downside. So, of course, down the line, it could end up being like diesel all over again, where they say, oh, it's the greatest thing ever, and now if you own a diesel, you are basically Satan Jr. But if you own a synthetic vehicle in future, that could happen again. For the moment, though, it's looking very promising because, and this is the key reason why I love it, I'm actually not as interested in the environmental side. And I know that's sacrilegious to say because you're supposed to care about the earth you live on and all that. You know, it, it would be detrimental to die. But the reason why I love it is because it allows you to have both the environmental side but it also allows you to still have what you love. So not only could synthetic fuel, and it very clearly has this potential, to in effect save the future of the car, but it could also actually save the past. It could help to keep those existing vehicles that we love going, but ironically make cars that are 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 years old more clean to run now than they were back then. Because if you could modify them or even just straight up run them on these synthetic fuels, maybe petrol primarily, but you never know. Well, that would be awesome. Because it would mean you could like roll up in a 50s, you know, American muscle car or a luxury car of the time and have no guilt whatsoever and not even be guilt tripped. You could roll up in a Hummer, a H2, you know, with a massive diesel engine. And if there's a synthetic version, or well, not a diesel engine, the H2, that would be a H1, a massive petrol engine in the case of the H2, roll up guilt free. No, you're still going to be judged for other reasons, but at least it would allow almost like a saving of the past and the future. So yes, it's probably too much to weigh all on synthetic fuel, and I'm not saying it's the saviour of the world by any stretch, but to me that one is the most exciting at the moment. It has a huge amount of promise. If it doesn't work out, then I would definitely say that electric is probably the one I would keep an eye on the most. Hydrogen is also a very good contender. Some safety concerns uh, tend to be at the forefront of many people's minds, but again, there are ways of making most things much safer than you would initially think. Even something like fusion, you know, nuclear power, cold fusion, it's theoretically possible to have that in a vehicle, but I don't know if I'd want to drive a Ford Nucleon in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, but maybe that's just me. Ultimately, I think that hybrids are probably the best all-round current option that we have, simply because it is literally the best of both worlds. You've got the electric stuff for lower speeds around town, and then using essentially that petrol or diesel burner as a generator. Charge up the motors a little bit, get out on the highway where the electric motors aren't as efficient, and then you switch to fuel where it is more efficient. So one of the reasons why I actually do like hybrids is because it's a kind of a symbiotic system. Symbiotes are not just something which draws life force from something, it's actually a mutually beneficial arrangement, such as, for instance, the, the birds that will pick meat from a crocodile's teeth. It's a beneficial arrangement to both of them. It cleans the crocodile's mouth, but it also gives the bird food. Likewise with a hybrid, petrol or diesel engines are not efficient at low speeds. Electric motors are not efficient at high speeds. You combine them both, they cancel each other out to some degree, of course nothing's perpetual, and you end up with a really cool combination. Again, it can always be improved, but even vehicles that I've driven with hybrid layouts, like the, for instance, BMW i8, which I love, 
they show the potential which it has. And that was in a car that came out years ago already. So to me, hybrids are probably pretty much the best that we currently have. For the future, I would say you can lay a fairly high amount of hope on electric, because all we really need to fix is the battery technology. And of course, that isn't just going to be in electric vehicles. Once they unlock those keys to having better battery types, it's going to affect a lot more than just electric vehicles. It will be appliances, etc. And beyond that, synthetic fuel, as I said, is the one which excites me the most. So tell me down below which one do you love the idea of? What's your favourite maybe of the current crop? And which one do you think maybe has the best option for the future? But ultimately, that's it for my answer to this question. As I said, if you'd like to ask me a different one, could be about cars, gaming, the channel, life, whatever, then jump over to speakpipe.com slash HSG and ask away. But until next time, I'll see you then. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.